Brian, let, let me touch you. you. You work on jobs and the economy. And if there's one thing I would say the number one on um, Americans' minds is the rising cost of everything. Um, every food item, uh, your rent, <laughs> anything you do, your, your dollar goes f not as far. And we've watched study after study from Wharton's that it's costing you 3500 more, that we've watched with this one-party rule, um, not just from gasoline, but this one-party rule. Their policies have created this damage in so many ways. So your committee is looking at a lot of how do you control inflation, whereas we have not seen inflation like this in 40 years. 60% of those are who are in the workforce have never seen inflation above 4%, and just last month, 7.9. So what are some of the challenges you guys see? Yeah, Americans can't afford democratic one-party rule, and people are getting clobbered every single day. When I go home, when all the members here go home, we hear time and again how people are taking it on the chin, whether or not they're at the gas pump, whether or not they're at the grocery store buying food, whether or not they're buying a new or a used car. They're seeing those prices going up, and the biggest difference here from pre-pandemic to today is wages aren't keeping up with inflation. So if we look back to pre-pandemic after the tax reforms that Republicans in the House put forward, we saw real wage growth across the spectrum, across the spectrum, women, Hispanics, blacks, Asians, veterans. We saw wage growth north of 6%. Now we're seeing real wage growth actually decreasing where wages aren't keeping up with inflation. And so inflation impacts everybody. Who does it hurt the most? It hurts seniors on fixed incomes and low-income workers in particular those who are renting. We're seeing rent costs go up, and on top of that, it's coupled with gas, with food, with other life essentials. What can we do to turn the corner on this? One, we can return to sound money policies. We've seen the Federal Reserve bulk up their balance. We've seen runaway fiscal spending by the Democrats, and continuing to see that is being put forward as solutions to the, what is actually going to exacerbate the problem. When you dig into Build Back Better, policy after policy, taxes job creators, puts in place policies that discourage Ameri Amer companies from producing products here in the United States, rather than Republican policies to say, we need to build things here in the United States to secure our supply chain. We have opportunities there. And in particular, we still have over a million workers who've left the workforce from before the pandemic to today, completely left the workforce. In addition to that, we have millions of Americans who are looking for work, yet we have over 11 million jobs that are available. And so we have a need to connect workers to the jobs of the future, to make sure that they have the skill and preparation for those jobs. And in particular, as we look at the Parents' Bill of Rights with Julio Letlow's leading, we need to make sure moms and dads have the ability to make sure that their schools are preparing their sons and daughters for those jobs. You know, um, what's interesting, it wasn't just Republicans who warned the Democrats. If they did with this runaway spending that they would create inflation. Larry Summers told them. I mean, you couldn't get somebody closer in the Democratic Party from being in the Clinton administration, being the Secretary Treasury. I mean, he literally, I know what he probably said behind the scenes, but because of how strong he was out front, but they just kept going forward. And even today, now you get the reporting. At first, they would say it's transitory. Then they would blame um, the pandemic. Now they're blaming Putin. I mean, there's a different story. Now they're admitting even the Fed chair is admitting this isn't going away. And the only way you get out of inflation, it almost seems like it's painful. But Pelosi thinks it's good for the deficit. It's good for everything else. I mean, I just can't believe this. And what, what are some of the actions that we can take right away outside of the sound fiscal policy and others? Do you look to the next Congress? Absolutely. The, the Democrats continue to put forward plans to spend their way out of the problem. Spending your way is only going to make yourself further behind the eight ball. We need to grow ourselves out of the challenge that the Democrats have put us in. To grow ourselves out of this, we have to put forward tax policies like we've seen before, encouraging production here in the United States. We have to reexamine our education system to make sure that we're tying the preparation for the jobs of the future. We've seen this disconnect and it's continued to grow. We've got to empower moms and dads to make sure that their children are receiving the education that they need to be able to join the workforce of the future. Uh, we need to continue to work to really secure the American supply chain. And to do that, we need to put forward policies that are encouraging our job creators to produce products here in the United States, rather than taxing our job creators and encouraging those job creators to go abroad to produce their products. Excellent. Garrett, I, I want to ask you, you yours, yours is energy and environment. And I, and I will tell from all of you, He's probably one of the brightest individuals on, on these two subjects um, from an ability of the knowledge of what's going on and not. And what's interesting to me, I, I was listening to the conference chair on the Democratic side, and he just said the other day, nobody in the Democratic conference